Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and we actually finished down a little bit today. If you've been watching the channel, you know I'm 100% net short. I'm still gunning for that big flush that we haven't had yet. I still think it's around the corner, uh, but stay to the end of this video. I'll let you know how I'm positioned going forward. I've also got another special announcement at the end of this video I think you'll be really interested in, so make sure you stay tuned in for that. So here we're just looking at the 15 minute chart of SPY. You can see we opened pretty flat today held steady in the morning, climbed uh, in the lunchtime uh, trading period towards the afternoon, then come 1.32, it just started to peter out and it's rolled over. Same with the Qs. And we've just finished down towards near the lows. And if you just look at a five minute chart, we can see towards the end of the day there, the market was trying to hold and rally and then it just got smashed down. Uh, so I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. But let's go look over at the heat map today. We can see it's much the same trend over the last week or so. We've pretty mixed uh, kind of breadth out there. There's nothing, you know, all green, all red. The healthcare and utilities and defenses were off today, which I thought was interesting, as well as energy. Everything else was kind of a little bit flat. Um, there's quite a lot of bit of uh, dispersion out there, not much breadth. Um, over to economic data, we had retail infantries come in a little bit higher than expected. So that's not a good uh, trend, uh, although small uh, for retailers. Um, wholesale in infantries came in a little bit less than expected. Um, home prices uh, came off worse than expected, uh, only grew 4.6% year over year versus 5.8% uh, expected. PMI came in a little bit worse than expected and consumer confidence as well. So the, the consumer is uh, not feeling as good as before about the economy and their job and everything. We've still got fear and greed index at 59, which is a little surprising given uh, where the markets are and everything, but I think that's got more to do with the mean crowd alive again. And that's evidenced by, um, if you look at uh, this uh, table here, is the most active stock options today. And you can see the top uh, Tesla, you know, of course, most of the time, 1.6 million contracts traded today, 62% of them calls. AMC, 52% of them calls. Meta, 66% calls. NVIDIA, uh, not quite, almost as half. Um, Luminar Technologies, 88%. Amazon, 58%. Marathon Digital, 63%. Rivian, 62%. Bed Bath Beyond. 74%. So what's that saying? That's saying there's a lot of meme buyers out there. They love buying calls on these, you know, structurally broken stock, low price stocks in the hopes that they, you know, squeeze the shorts and all that uh, higher. But on the other end of that, we have uh, corporate insiders, which uh, typically do a great job in contrarian moves. They are, have been selling into this rally and still elevated selling even here. And we can see the dark index of um, institutional buyers who trade in dark pools. Uh, their level of buying is starting to roll over a bit as well. Okay, so back to the charts. We're on the daily chart here. And we can see there's a lot of indecision. We haven't had a full bodied candle day for a while now. And this is kind of, the market's kind of choking up. But I'm going to get back to this at the end of the video as I always do. After we go through all the markets so we can look for clues with some intermarket analysis and see what's really happening uh, out there and, and you know dig under the under the covers to find out um, what the intermarket mechanics are doing so over to um, the Dow actually finished down the most today and that's looking a bit bearish there and uh, smalls have held up still in this resistance zone international indices we've got uh, Canada now under the 50 bar VWAP uh, the FTSE UK 100 moving down towards it looking bearish euro stocks as well just kind of consolidating, moving down with it. Um, you can see we've got bearish seasonality um, out there as well. Uh, the Nikkei, still a little bit above. Um, the Aussie 200, a bit below, and the China 50 is below as well. Although volatility is pretty tame, looking at nine day VIX here at 19 handle. Not much happening right up the front in volatility. Got FIX still holding the 20 though, the 30 day VIX holding 20, three month at 21. Volatility, volatility is a little bit uh, compressed as well. And what's really compressed is realized volatility on three day charts. A realized volatility is currently tracking at a annualized rate of 15%, which is very low. But the thing about vol volatility is it's very cyclical. It's even more cyclical than price. It's very mean reverting. 
um, volatility. So now is uh, now can be expected at some point we are going to swing higher after we've had this you know bit of a prolonged swing low and realized volatility, actual volatility in the market, not implied volatility, which the VIX is. Moving on, we can see the spread between VIX and realized volatility is moving up. So the market is starting to price in some moves coming in ahead. Uh, put call ratio about flat. Equity uh, put call ratio is really low. That's evidenced by the, you know, the meme stock buyers and skew the price of puts versus calls uh, holding around 120 and it's moved off its lows as well looking over at breadth we've got 41 percent of stocks above the 50-day average and 55 percent of stocks above the 200-day average and that's kind of rolled over and broken its trend line and this is actually a great leading indicator if you remember markets topped out and you know basically the start of 22 uh, we rolled over, we peaked kind of in late 21. However, if you look at the breadth, the amount of stocks above the 200-day average, that actually peaked back in April 21, much earlier. So it was a huge divergence there in price. And that showed overall stocks were uh, coming down uh, versus the big ones just holding up. And that's, that's looking to have rolled over now as well. So that is not a bullish sign um, for stocks overall. And if you look at the amount of... Uh, NYSE stocks making new highs that's kind of trading flat as well and you can see here back in late 21 before the market peak that started it was trading flat it wasn't getting above 100 uh, too much there at the end and the amount of NASDAQ stocks making new highs again it's not breaking out and it's trading flat so I'm still convinced this is a bear market rally um, as we speak Moving on to the spread charts and looking at growth sectors, high beta, cyclical versus defensive, actually uh, popped up a little bit today. Same with high beta versus low volatility, but just like the market, trading in a really kind of low volatility, kind of weird little price action uh, here around the 50 bar. That's growth versus value. Had the uh, yield curve um, is inverted as it's ever been for as long as it's ever been. So. This is a really interesting environment and a little bit tricky, a little bit confusing as well. Um, so we've got the year, the bond market is saying like for sure we're going into recession. Um, there's very high probability um, and it could be a hard landing. Everyone's hoping for a soft landing. This could be a really hard landing. And we've got rates climbing as well and inflation's still there. Um, so this is, you know, big dark storm clouds on, for the equity market. When you've got this combination of a, of a bond market saying there's a recession coming at the same time, we've got climbing inflation and rates and valuations for equities are pretty expensive too. Uh, I'm sure they've come off their bubble peak, but still overall in the long term, they're still pretty expensive. Moving forward, uh, high yield uh, versus treasuries came off a little bit today. Had the 10-year just climb a little bit. It's consolidating here. Uh, you could call this a bit of a bull flag on the 10-year. And September Fed fund futures just sneakily climbing here again, sitting at 540, not much of a pullback. Parabolic walk the line uptrend, very strong stuff. High yield just came off a little bit and sitting at its trend line here. So the market's kind of really trading quiet and flat. Everything's kind of coiling up. And after things coil up, uh, the, big, the more they coil up, the more they uncoil as volatility is a, a cyclical mean reverting uh, time series. And look at the dollar futures just sitting there consolidating as well in a bullish pattern. That is negative uh, for equity, equities as we go higher in the dollar. And with the stronger dollar, you can see the euro is coming off. And against the yen, we're climbing as well. Bitcoin came off a little bit, still consolidating as well. Commodities have held their support zone that we've been watching here for a while. I do expect this to hold even in the face of a higher dollar, uh, just for the structural tailwinds of commodities. However, that to break, then those bullish bets are off for commodities. Had Dr. Copper actually have a nice little bounce today, up 1.6% above his trend line. 
Not much else to report in the commodity land. Oil held it bounced off its uh, support as well. We could put in a support line around here. And that's the one we'll be looking at uh, for oil to hold. Over to stock sectors, you can see it was pretty mixed out there today. Um, did have ARC up 2%, but that was, this thing's mostly vol volatility. See, volatility adjusted, it's not too much, but you can see this is almost a bit of a bear flag and pulling back to its 50 bar VWAP. Um, did have energy off 1.4% and coming down uh, to its support line here and had gold actually bounce a little bit. I'm not sure that gold has found a bottom that uh, here yet though. I'm not uh, not willing to call this a bottom on gold, especially with a, a climbing dollar. Um, what was interesting today is uh, look at the defensive sectors, healthcare, trading down. Um, I'm not sure if this is a bounce. We've got above average volume. We're now down the bottom of our buy sell band, but we can see the range strength's falling off, about to go negative into trending mode. Healthcare, it's still trading pretty fat and a lot of range there and utilities that looks like it could be going into a trend mode um, like back here so typically in a bull market you don't you don't see even in a, in a rotation you don't see defensive stocks selling off like, like the price action we're seeing in defensive stocks that's not that's not really good for overall in the stock market of even the defensive stocks i've got bearish price action like that um BlackRock just holding down the bottom of its range here. Not too much to report in uh, mega cap tech land other than Meta had a nice little bounce today. Semis came off. I think Nvidia is pretty pricey up here. If we just go look on our stock fair value indicator, um, because the earnings have come down and analysts have adjusted their estimates and so forth, our fair value indicator has adjusted for that because we use users forward um, earnings expectations and a lot of other things, balance sheet items and a few other things. So we've got fair value at on the video at $117 a share, currently at $232 a share. So we're at 90, 96% overvalued here. Um, and I know we had this strike strong price action run up in the video but it kind of looks to have broken here in this gap so it'll be interesting to see if we can break up above 240 otherwise that could act as a bit of a roof and we could be looking at a bit of a good risk reward setup here to the downside uh, i can see i'm still 24 percent above the uh, the 50 bar average here um, i've got a little bit of bearish seasonality coming into the stock as well so sometimes these earning gaps, well, it looks strong here on, on a gap up on volume. They can kind of act as like the, a blow off top when you when you see like that. Um, so I'm I'm skeptical of of Nvidia here now at at 232 a share. I mean, it was not long ago we were just in December we we're at 140. So we've we've already we've climbed 100 points in uh, in two months. So that's looking a little overcooked to me. Tesla. Investor day tomorrow. Elon Musk promising new grand plans for Earth and how he's uh, making uh, new clean energy products that's going to save the future of Earth. Big talk, big words. Actually, uh, news came out today. There have been a new uh, gigafactory in Mexico, in northern Mexico. So I thought that that would have been to get ex investors excited and um, into investor days, but no not really so that's kind of it looks like price actions kind of hitting the brakes here um well it has since the 9th of feb uh we traded higher than what we did today so we're definitely losing momentum here um we can see the momentum on the range strength is starting to uh, get lower but we're still 29 percent above the 50 bar so we're still at really elevated levels here and we're looking for that trend line to break before we could um you know, call it uh, starting to roll over, and then it would not be surprised to come back and tag down here in the 170s at all. Over today, uh, Coinbase up almost 10%. Um, I think that was just, um, you know, a bit of meme stock um, hype uh, because Bitcoin was actually off today. AMC, like we said uh, yesterday, you know, rocked up before earnings. 
and now it's off 6% and after market and the just report their earnings were off almost 5% 5% now in after hour trading and so a bit mixed across the meme board still some up moves there Carvana up 5% and um, Robinhood up 3% active today we had a few earnings out but pretty muted reaction uh, workday flat uh, Occidental Petroleum flat Zoom up a little bit Target up a little bit their earnings came in actually a lot better than expected and Norwegian Cruise Lines actually off pretty hard 10% so that's a travel stock off pretty hard okay so back over to the markets so one thing I, I did over the weekend and I do every month is I, I go through my watch list of about 250 stocks or like 250 of the biggest most liquid stocks in the market in all different categories and industries and I update my support and resistance zones on all of them and one thing I notice is the vast majority of stocks are putting in like really strong topping patterns and look to have hit their roofs and you know they've got these and inverted hammer and a lot of you know wicks upside wicks and divergences and and all these technical topping patterns the stocks look to really have hit a roof uh structurally so i'm i'm still betting this is a bear market rally and that we might have just broken uh with this trend line here and as you can see we haven't put in a full body candle for a while and volatility is coiling and with these wicks the market's kind of really indecisive you know and I think it's going to resolve itself in one way or the other. Um, it's not going to go on like this forever. It's very kind of strange price action here. We've still got bearish seasonality into the market into early uh, March. You can see our uh, seasonality forecast indicators forecasting negative movement and then sees and positive movement and volatility. And we are seeing volatility pricing uh, start to move up. Uh, the breadth is just not there for a bull market and then with all these meme stock buyers are buying all these calls they're not a leading indicator um, rates still holding strong um, dollar moving up um, I'm still I'm still bearish on this market um, I have to be um, of course I may be wrong it's not nothing's a hundred percent right you know that's why we have risk management and stops and we can change uh, quickly you got to be as fickle as the market but I'm still I was hundred percent net short coming in today I'm still hundred percent net short I am just going for this flush and I want to hold it down till we get down to oversold levels uh, down around here so I don't just want to ride it out for one day I'm kind of I might if it if it goes my way I'll I'll flatten out by the time we get towards here depending on a lot of things but the idea is to to hold this short as much as I can um, for as long as I can as long as price actions are confirming all that but for now I'm just feeling bearish and I'm gonna remain short and um, you know Tesla's investor day tomorrow maybe that is the event that just you know sounds great but it might the market might use that as a pivot point to sell off um, but who knows anything can happen uh, that's uh, that's the markets for you also uh, check out um, put the the video up on the screen now we just did a special um, video yesterday how you can find stocks that are about to double it's a unique trading strategy and I think you're really going to enjoy it and find some value in it it's really simple and straightforward and anyone can do it and uh, we've got a special offer in there um, for viewers of this of this channel that I think you guys will love so check that video out on the screen uh, now and um, I'm sure you guys will love it and hope to see you again tomorrow afternoon to talk about uh, price action tomorrow after Tesla's investor day should be an interesting run okay guys take care